So in this section, we're going to be talking about forces and these things known as dynamical systems, which can be generalized just into the word dynamics. So we're going to be looking at Newton's laws and how they can be applied to real world applications. So this uh, is the contents of this chapter. Uh, to the definitions of Newton's three laws, which I will abbreviate to an FL for the first, an SL for the second, and NTL for the third. Now, how to derive the sum of forces is mass times acceleration from Newton's second law. Uh, differentiate between mass and weight. How to draw these things known as free body diagrams, which we'll be using throughout this entire section. Uh, pulley systems, ones that have more than one string. Problems on an incline and how to deal with problems inside of lifts, which tend to trip up a lot of people. So that's why I've left it right to the very end. So before we actually get into uh, the actual maths part of it, uh, I'd like to go through just a bit of history uh, with Isaac Newton. Uh, he was born in Wolfsthorpe in England. Um, he lived with his grandparents after his father died and mother remarried. And he was a very talented young fellow and he went to Cambridge to study. Uh, him and his laws of motion uh, have laid the groundwork for classical mechanics. Uh, he has also done this thing called the law of universal gravitation which we will get to um, when we get to astrophysics. Uh, he was knighted in 1705 and served as the president of the Royal Society from 03 until his death in 1727. Um, he himself as well was a theologian who believed extensively in, in God's nature. So he sort of fulfilled a bit of irony in that case because the biblical interpretation of how the earth formed is slightly different to the physical interpretation. Um, so it is slightly contrarian in fact, but his theories and his laws um, have been confirmed, obviously, because we've been using them for over 200 and something years. So that's just a little insight into Isaac Newton's life.